Hey, everybody. Welcome to Rough Stuff. My name's Bridget Greenberg. I've broken out of my cage, and I am doing just fine. God. Uh, I had to. And, uh, and tables uh, have turned quite a bit. Um, we have... Sarah Griffith, who is normally the co-host of the show and is now a hostage of it. A hostage, uh, exactly. <laughs> a hostage of it. Um, in the hot seat with um, her parents, uh, Debbie and Lanny, taking the reins here. Yeah. Sarah, do you have any last words? Um, I just want to say to all of my fans uh, that I appreciate your continued support after this episode. Obviously, before the episode. We love our fans. We love our fans. We love them. And, um, yeah, no, uh, just, I guess, um, God bless you, children of the earth and me, especially, I would say, yeah. um, and, and enjoy. I, I really, I, what I, um, <clears throat> you love these people and they love you. Yes. So what could go wrong? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Just yes. 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 Is your answer for everything? Yes, it's just your parents are like normal parents and my parents are like (laughs) showbiz parents. Um, Like I said in the previous episode, my father has a radio background, so um, this is almost too much up their alley, which is what concerns me. Uh, I am afraid that they're going to actually crush this and then everyone's going to be like, "Uh, well, take Sarah off the show and replace them, obviously. (laughs) They're they're intimidating people. I'm excited to interview them. I I I feel like I got the better end of the stick. Um, yes. Here, uh, well, my parents were uh, very very nervous about this, and uh, I I feel like Debbie and Lanny are raring to go. So let let's get them on this pod. Okay. And again, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> No, it'll be fine. I'll get them on. Uh, I am here with, uh, we got them in the room, Lanny and Debbie Griffith. Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. How are y'all? Uh, hi. I'm very excited to have you guys here and uh, and, and talk about your sweet, sweet eldest daughter a little bit. She's Good very Good friend sweet. of mine. I assume you guys like her. We like her a lot. Yeah, we. I want her to come home and stay and live with us because she's so fun and entertaining. We always have a lot of fun when she's here. Then when she leaves, it's very depressing. Because we're because we're stuck oh. alone together. Right. It's very sad. Yes. Right. Yeah. The the empty nester problem. It's it's not a life that uh, my family was built for either. Uh, <laughs> That's why they have liquor. Exactly, liquor and and pets. Right. I'll drink to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's dive in. We we've heard a lot from Sarah over the course of. Uh, However long we've been running this podcast, 50 years, I think it feels like. 50 years, okay. Uh, Yeah, it it feels like it's been a while. Uh, But we've heard a lot about uh, her version of her preteen teen teen years. Uh, You guys had a a front row seat to this whole thing. Uh, So I would love to hear your impressions of uh, young Sarah. She was funny, cute smart whimsical you're being too nice lanny you're being too nice to her. well she wasn't she wasn't a mean kid at all she was a fun kid who uh helped out her other classmates in school and um she was very successful whatever she was like almost the class president wasn't she she was the mayor of biztown yes oh, yeah she, she was, was. The mayor of biztown. <laughs> and she was miss hspva so and that what? that usually goes to a guy so i mean it worked for her wow mm-hmm. what is that just like a uh superlative did she have to run for that or no the whole school voted for her you know it's the the high high school for the performing and visual arts and yeah so she was like the most popular girl so. whoa didn't she, didn't she run for class president in elementary school and like i said she but, ran for mayor of biztown mayor the j a um junior achievement. oh junior achievement yeah okay. and, and she won so she's been in oh. politics she's multi <laughs> multi-talented oh my god uh, so she ran for, do you, re- was there like a slogan for her, her mayoral run? I don't recall a slogan, but I do know that we bought a bunch of Hanes t-shirts and right. we, um, handcrafted vote for Sarah, um, on each and every one. And so she took them to school and she basically bribed her way into the, we bought her way into show. it. Just like a real, <laughs> yeah. just like a real politician. Yeah, we bought her right, way yeah. into it. Money talks, you, you start- bullshit walks. 
Yeah, so she, you guys, you guys trained her to be a uh, overachiever performer, front and center of the stage. We were looking forward to her becoming a lawyer, so that didn't work. <laughs> oh my god, I, <laughs> well, I, she... I just, I picture uh, my cousin Vinny, but the Texan version, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, that's uh, what was what is Biztown. Uh, that was through junior achievement. It was, uh, okay. you know, you learn financial literacy and they have um, a government and then small business owners. And the oh, object wow. is to make money, just like in the real world. Yeah, to live in the oh, real wow. world. She was the mayor of the business center of, of the little thing for junior achievements for what? Elementary kids? Junior high kids? It, it was her fifth grade class. Okay. But just just like um, BizTown, she's still not making any money. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. No, the, those, you know, politics and performing uh, doesn't pay off, uh, <laughs> is what we've learned. Uh, was she, I've, I've, I've had the pleasure of, of getting dinner with you guys and hanging out with you guys a little bit. I, I certainly uh, see the similarities. Uh, but uh, do, when you were a kid, were you anything like Sarah? Lanny, you definitely were. I, I guess I, I was kind of a leave it to beaver kid. I was always getting into trouble. Okay. I was always in the wrong place at the wrong time, but I could always talk myself out of any any situation I was in because I'm a I'm a good talker and I'm I'm a good convincer and um I, I somehow I got away with it all my life. <laughs> and and I will tell you that we are a house full of thespians with a th thespian. Right. So we all four um, have been are, on the stage. Have been on the stage. Lanny and right. I were in the same um, play, Arsenic and Old Lace. But a oh, couple of years apart part. in two different states. So there you go. Yeah, I was in oh. I was in my hometown of Baytown, Texas, and Debbie was doing Arsenic and Old Lace in her hometown in Florida. So I was playing Mortimer Brewster, and you were playing Ann Abby. Ann Abby. Oh, so, man. yes, so, the leads. Thank you. <laughs> we peaked so, too soon. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that's that's great. So yeah, it was a uh, she was. Did you have to like impart any of that onto Sarah? Any of the like performing or putting herself out there, or is she like always ready? Always, always, always ready. ready. She and her sister. As a matter of fact, we have video of when she was about three or four years old. Um, she had written several little plays, and we would sit <laughs> at the bottom of the staircase, and she and her sister would have to perform for us like little monkeys. So that was <laughs> oh very God. exciting. Oh yeah, we often had theater in the living room. We'd push push the chairs back, and the girls would take over the the floor and show us dance moves, and we play music for them, and they would dance and perform and put on costumes <laughs> and stuff. So it was very entertaining. If they did so and we liked it, she could eat for that evening. So oh, that's yeah, yeah. We paid them in that's food. Good. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so there was training. Yes, <laughs> yes. There there was probably. Do you remember what any of those? Uh, is there any like play or skit that stuck out to you guys? Not a play or skit, but she did have the bug in her because we used to have a back porch, and she would get. <laughs> She would put on her crown and um, a little karaoke microphone, and she would go out there and lip sync um, all of the Spice Girl songs. Oh, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> do, you, do you remember what Spice Girl she was? Which Spice Girl I was she? she was Scary Spice. Oh, okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with Scary Spice. That, that adds up. That's what, I, that's what I would give her even now. <laughs> that's... <laughs> That's amazing. Our uh, neighbors would come they, over and watch, and they go, "What in God's name are we watching here?" Because they didn't know who the Spice Girls were. I, I'm so sorry. I, I just remembered that. That was so cute. Yeah, and it was so long ago that when you looked up Spice Girls, it was always a porn site. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Well, there goes the show. <laughs> you had no, to turn that, it this, sick, didn't you? This is uh, exactly. <laughs> What we I'm want. Sorry. So it was super hard to explain who the Spice Girls was to uh, yeah. to the neighborhood watching these performances, I imagine. Um, that's so funny. Uh, that's, that's great. Uh, was Don't y'all ever get so, uh, hammered and sing Spice Girl songs? <laughs> oh, all the time. In oh, our, there you in go. Our, uh, we, we have a group chat with some of our other friends, and we're all... It's called the Spice Girls Room, so <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's carried on. Uh, that it's never, you know, her, her love for the Spice Girls still exists in all of us. It's, it's the uh, devotion. So, you guys said Sarah was always kind of a a, a, a performer. She was always a little bit hammy. Uh, was there like a specific moment that made you realize that, like, oh, this girl needs 
to go down this lane of being an actor performer. The very first time uh, when she was two to three years old, she was in preschool. And Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, we went to the church where the preschool was and uh, it was the very first parent teacher conference. And at that young age, her preschool teacher literally said, well, she's definitely destined for the high school for the performing and visual arts. And we were just trying to get her through, you know, the preschool, two-year-old yeah. class. Yeah. Right. So wow. it's always been, um, she's always had it within her to be um, a little bit extra. But again, I put that <laughs> on your family. Well, we're all out there, my family. Yeah, but I, I think yeah. if she had not gone in the direction of HSPVA for uh, high school for the performing arts, she would be a successful lawyer at this point because she's a very successful uh, uh, bullshit voc- talker, bullshit, <laughs> right? Vocalist, uh, whatever. She would be very good at doing law and she might be making money. <laughs> so we're still trying to push would. her down that. Right. Although at her very, very young age for several years, it was very scary because all she wanted to do was be a mail carrier. So there you go. <laughs> mm. Wow. Yeah, that yeah. one. That's a fresh new. Uh, yeah, how did how did how yeah how did how did the mail carrier fantasy like uh, manifest itself? We Wait, had that really what? nice mail carrier, oh, Deborah. Deborah. Yeah, Deborah, the mail carrier would come by every single day and visit with the girls on the front porch, and you know we'd get Deborah some lemonade, and she was really cool. She lived around the block from us, and actually wound up going to our church with her girlfriend or her partner, and uh, she always played with the kids in the front yard, and so. You know, she's like, you want to go carry the mail with me? And Sarah goes, yes. And I go, no, you don't. We don't know this woman. She carries the mail. Now she go was inside ready. and wash up. Right. Yeah. You you guys didn't need a dog. You had Sarah to go fetch the right. mail for exactly. you guys. Exactly, yes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's amazing. Well, and then okay, Hannah, so wanted to, Hannah wanted to be, run a, a, a beauty salon, a barber, a, a barber salon. Because she got Barbara right. Streisand yeah. mixed up with Barber Salon. So she called herself Barber <laughs> Salon. That right. Barbara Salon. That's right. amazing. I'm uh, sure Streisand would love to know that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she listens all the time, too. I mean, as do we all. Mm-hmm. I, Barbara is the queen. Uh, uh, so, you, as you guys mentioned, she she went to performing arts high school. I imagine she, she did plays before then. What? Which means you guys had to sit through a lot oh. of middle school and high school theater. Uh, and so what? What do you think was either the most awkward, the most painful, exp- like theater going experience you had uh, with Sarah? Uh, she was raped on stage in front of me, and oh, I knew that no. she was going to be raped when I. She told me in the car going to school, "Dad, I'm going to p- be in a rape scene." I said, "You're raping someone." She goes, "No, I'm going to be raped." And I said, "I don't, I don't want to hear that kind of talk." And that makes me <laughs> disturbed. So we go in the theater. Yeah. Debbie's like, "Oh, shut up!" So we go to the theater, and the guy rapes her, and I'm like. Ugh. As a father, shouldn't I like get up and take my leather belt off and beat the crap right. out of this kid or what? Yeah, wait backstage and <laughs> yeah, beat up this. Yeah, watch this thing and I'm like, ugh. And the sad that- thing about it is, well, it's not sad. I mean, it was a great honor. She played Marisol in Marisol. Right. So yes. you know the story, you know. Her crowning achievement, pro- yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, she had a lot of dialogue and she was on stage. So it was a very proud moment. But when, um, when she went to college... Uh, she started to tell us about another play that she was in. And my husband said, well, that's okay. As long as it's not like that girl who got raped and murdered on stage to which she <laughs> replied, dad, that, that, that was, was me. me. Yeah. I totally blocked that in my mind that my daughter oh, no. was getting raped f- uh, five nights a week and on Sundays, uh, you twice, know, not, twice on Sunday, twice on Sundays. Oh. Thank you. And then I was sitting here not doing anything about it. It's like, that's, that's creepy. <laughs> so yeah, I had a little problem with that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's never That's done amazing. nude scenes, but I have a problem with actual violence against my own child in the name of theater. Yeah, yeah I, I I can imagine. That's hard to sit through. Uh, yeah. De- Debbie, I just remembered, um, I'm not sure if we ever told this story um, on the pod, but I, I remember Sarah telling me, uh, I guess you guys were on the phone a little while ago. Uh, this was a while ago. And uh, I, I don't know, we were talking about, you guys must have been talking about this podcast and you asked how, how my diary was going. Do you remember this? I don't. Uh, oh, this is... Uh, how long ago I, was that? It, 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 was, it was a bit ago. Um, where I just have to tell the story because you're here and, and I just remembered. Where you asked how my diary was going um, and Sarah 
and all her, uh, you know, trying to defend her friend who did not need defending was told you, mom, how could you ask that? It's so anti-Semitic. Of course, you were talking about Bridget Jones's diary. <laughs> oh. Um, Sarah immediately was just like, you're talking about the diary of Anne Frank because that's my Jewish friend? <laughs> Uh, no, but I believe that. That happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, I I just, uh, talking to you, uh, just had a flashback to that story. And Bridget, and... you know, because we're from Florida, everybody thinks we're crazy, so. Right, Ex- <laughs> exactly. We're swamp people, so right. <laughs> you assume the worst out of us. And uh, <laughs> tables got turned on Sarah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, theater performing obviously a very important part of her life the the i would say equally important uh part of her life is is star wars oh absolutely um, oh, lord uh yeah so what i uh, i'm curious what was her introduction to star wars like at first Let, let's start with that her well, intro to star wars because she loved so much pop culture i thought it was important that she see um the classic movies, you know, Casablanca, right. Gone with the Wind. Yes. And of course, um, Star Wars, because Whoa. it's such a franchise. And, you know, it was coming back when, when you guys were younger, right? Yes. Yeah. So Lane and I lived through, you know, six, seven, and eight, or actually right. the, the real Star Wars. The, but yeah. anyway, um, so the first one came out. And um, so we went to the movies because I thought it was important that she see something like that. Right. Um, and then, you know, to tell her the background and then eventually show her the other movies. Right. And uh, I had no idea it was going to so <laughs> what apologize you apologize. What you were starting. To the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So she saw, you guys saw Phantom Menace. Yes. For, before the original trilogy. Yes. True. Okay. And, and we were... Granted, very young when those came out, yeah. but do was he was it immediate love and also juxtaposed with uh, I, I, you guys grew up with those movies, you saw them, you loved them. After you, what was the juxtaposition between how you felt and how Sarah felt about well, when, when we Menace? saw it? You know, the 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 graphics and all of the special effects were really something. I mean, you look back at it now and it looks so cheap and everything. But right. when we saw it, it was yeah. groundbreaking, you know? So right. that's why it was so important. And it was so visually appealing. And the storyline, you know, is the same, you know, storyline, right. family, looking for somebody, looking for something, good versus evil, et cetera. But I just thought it was important that she be aware of, you know, because when Phantom Menace came out, you know, and we knew that there was going to be more than one, but right. we didn't know it was going to continue on and continue on mm-hmm. and then yeah. grow as big as it did. And, <laughs> and so I just thought it was really important that she saw it. And then she would, you know, she's got a Cracker Jack brain. So if she likes something, she like can spew it back at you. And so right. she did spew speak in like star wars terms and then we saw the next one and i'm not big on jar jar binks but she will defend right. him and yes. um so it it's just always um my my proudest joy and my biggest regret <laughs> uh, so yeah what, there you go yeah was it so was there like okay you said you mentioned jar jar was that the character she immediately like that's oh, it. she'll That's defend up. him, and I'm like, he was useless to the storyline. I don't get yeah. it. It was so far out there. I don't know why that character was included, but she'll she'll defend him. So, yeah. You know. Okay. So I was in how, college how, when Star Wars came yeah. out. I was bored with the film. I thought it sucked. I never <laughs> went back. I never th- saw any value to it at all. And it's been very annoying for the last twenty years to have, have my oh. family speak and Star Wars speak around here. I'm truly a Lost in Space fan. So once you're a Lost in Space <laughs> fan, you'll never do Star Trek. Or oh Star Wars, so there you go. Wow! <laughs> All That's right, it. I thought it sucked and still does. <laughs> wow! Hot take coming the, from the Griffiths. Yes. I I I'm the anti not... Star Wars over here. We're getting a divorce. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That is that is. Uh, I didn't realize I was hitting such like a, a touchy. You're, you're either territory. lost in space or you're Star Trekky, and I was not a Star Trek. I was lost in space on CBS. You were so. lost in space. Yep. Uh, so you've just been suffering through what I've I had the hots are. for June Lockhart since I was about three years old. <laughs> Loved her in those little uh, zip up suits she wore in Star Trek. Right. I mean, lots in space. Was there? <laughs> that's 
that's that's incredible so you you were no part was there any like star wars costuming that you had to help with halloween's uh, no debbie did all that because i'm like Ugh, i'm not doing star wars costumes but debbie dressed no. the kids up in star wars outfits oh what what uh i mean i imagine there's a princess leia of course of course look at that right. hair it's so easy to make the little cinnabons the on her head yeah <laughs> All right. So was that the go-to character for for? No. It again. You know, we had the Spice Girls, and then we had right, the Powerpuff okay. Girls. Right. And then she's Japanese, so there's always the geisha. And then of course right. we're Disney family members, so she's been right. every Disney princess that her sister wasn't. So there you go. That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is very interesting. So. Going back to like a more general sense of Sarah, do you, uh, is there a moment, I mean, Sarah, as she's talked about in this podcast has, uh, as a performer and in going to performing arts schools has, you know, had to swallow quite a bit of her pride (laughs) and isn't as easily embarrassed as, as most kids are. But is, is there a moment that you remember of her where you're like, this one's gonna, we're gonna think about this for a while. I don't, I don't. I don't think so. I don't know. She has no shame. That's the right. thing. No. So even if she does embarrass herself, we wouldn't know it. She owns yeah. it, and she makes the best of it. She's really a good kid. I uh, yeah, I'm sorry that, to tell you guys that, but she's really yeah. a nice human being, and uh, yeah, she really doesn't. She really not. Well, she's not really balanced. You know, she, <laughs> yeah. she goes. A that little, helps. She goes a little yeah. off sometimes in the one direction and it continues to grind and grind and grind. You're like, okay, all right, okay, we'll give it yeah. a rest. Come up for air. Uh, of course. And, and Bridget, that, you know she can't see straight, so there you right, go. Right. Yeah, Sarah does have very lopsided. She legitimately vision. does. I thought she was joking, but. She yeah. legitimately cannot see straight. So there you go. Uh, that's, um, yeah, my, my brother is colorblind and uh, my oh, wow. parents thought growing up they they just like thought he was dumb and didn't know how to see colors <laughs> until oh. they realized like oh no this is a thing he's actually colorblind so i'm I, actually I, colorblind yeah guys with dark oh. features are, are colorblind by nature so i'm colorblind yeah. i mean i can tell the difference of red light green light and orange light but i can't tell the difference between pink and mauve and purple and that sort of stuff oh yeah my brother's so bad where he knows i asked him and he knows traffic lights by the order they're in oh wow. right right not by the colors right <laughs> wow he is colorblind. that's how it, yeah he's it's a, a great source of joy for me uh <laughs> to, to have a colorblind brother to mess with uh constantly but uh that's that that is what you guys said is is who i know sarah to be was there uh like can you think of a moment where she maybe did something that might have been embarrassing or like a play or something but she just bounced right back and bounced both her and her sister hannah both her and her sister hannah pee peed in their seat at the wortham theater when i took them to see the nutcracker ballet and didn't think twice about it they got up and i just looked at the little the chair that was just full of girl tt i went oh well i guess that's what we do here got up and left (laughs) we don't embarrass easily (laughs) well there are other girls with tt in the theater the place smelled like vinegar at the end of the one (laughs) season that's wait. So did they did they sit through the whole play that way, yes, or did they yes. do it? No, and the then entire they... ballet. They whizzed through the whole ballet. It was fantastic. <laughs> oh my god! It was they so exciting. Sat... Yeah. Wow that that's a that's a love of the performing arts. Though. Oh, these uh, were red velvet seats in the new in the Wortham Theater, the oh. big posh theater in downtown Houston. <laughs> so the the TT sort of sat on top of the chair. It sort of beat it up because they had like uh, Johnson oh. wax and wax on the on the cushions. <laughs> So you knew that there was TT in the seat, but every yeah, every the, little kid yeah. there, every little kid in there peed all over the chairs. It was great. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. You can't clean that. You just you know, just, just wipe kinda... it out, right? Yeah. They were thirteen and fifteen. No. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, okay. They I, were toddlers. That, I was like, that's that's what you lead with. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that we're we're at this point in the podcast immune to peeing and. and vomiting stories speaking of which someone asked uh and i don't know if you guys know um one of our fans asked uh about her her vomit her vom log uh do do you guys get updated on that (laughs) um i don't think that she's had an episode in a while but it's actually a real thing and um there's a very um well-known actress whose daughter also um 
has the same affliction and <laughs> um, and turned us on to a support group. And so Sarah's actually like in the support group. So there oh. you go. Vomiters well, that's unite. <laughs> that, that's amazing. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad she's. You guys uh, were able to get support for for yes. our yes, friend yes. like that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we talked, and uh, I I kind of want to bring it back and give you guys more opportunities to to brag about your daughter because uh, Sarah was uh, gracious to me and, and gave my parents that opportunity. Uh, what is there? Is there like a and I'm sure I'm sure you have you have plenty because you guys are loving supporting parents. But uh, uh, a moment that you think of that is like indicative of who she is now as like a grown woman that like just made you very proud of her. I would say the moment she was walking across the stage to get her high school diploma, um, I realized, you know, a star was born here and there's no turning <laughs> back because the way she marched across that stage to get her diploma uh, and and the crowd applauded. I thought, well, that's it. She's out the door now, and she's going to be on her own. And then, just, of course, she you know racked up all the scores you could at St. Louis University and went through that uh, graduation moment. And Debbie and I were just you know a bundle of nerves up there in the stadium, sweating and you know profusely. And we were hungover <laughs> for college. We were very hungover. We had, we had to be Great. there at six o'clock in the morning to get in, in line to be in the theater by eight a.m. to start the ceremony. But Sarah marched right through all that, and I, and I realized, well, a star is born, and she's out of here now. And and I, I would just say that um, all through Sarah's uh, time growing up and being around her family, she's always mm-hmm. been a type of person who um, has always been super kind to other people. And if anybody was being bullied, she'd step in because she was the popular girl. And unbeknownst to her, she truly was a very, very popular girl. That's why we <laughs> built a pool in our backyard so that she would be. But anyway, um, she, <laughs> she's always been super duper kind and always giving. And her fifth grade teacher also said that she was going to be a major philanthropist. And um, she truly is. She gives she gives from her heart and she's just very, very kind, as I'm sure you have already seen. And yeah. when she feels strongly about something, she doesn't care who doesn't uh, agree with her. She's going to stand on her soapbox and tell her story. And I and I think in Ferguson, um, when she was in college, and she joined the protesting. I get emotional because it scares me every time. But yeah. um, she joined the protesters, and she was helping them out with um, with the amendments that they were saying that they were fighting for, and she was correcting them. And they they really appreciated her guidance and. Um, she, of course, was a leader in that for several days as well. So we have a very, very small um, young lady for a daughter, but she's got <laughs> a huge, huge heart. So there yeah. you go. That's amazing. We, yeah, we we love to make fun of each other, but uh, it, it's, it's nice to hear uh, these little moments. And of course, every child still, I think, gets a little embarrassed when their pr- when their parents uh, brag about them. So that's uh, and and she has love. really good taste in friends. Y'all have been really, really wonderful um, <laughs> out there in California. So thanks, thanks for taking care of her. Oh, I enjoy we're... I enjoy rough cuts. Every time it runs, I always retweet it on my Twitter page. I love the conversations. I love the dialogue. I love the feedback, and I love all the special guests y'all have on each week or each month. Oh. I lo- I loved when you had was a Paul Green. Oh yeah, good job. The, oh yeah, that left the sex tapes and the and the oh, girls my God. the yeah. girlfriend's okay. father got him heard all the sex tapes and Paul didn't know and he went to call in the girls' house and the father met him at the door. That that was hilarious. <laughs> My favorite is that crazy kid whose parents obviously didn't love him and sent him <laughs> off into the wilderness to live like animals. I don't understand oh my that God. One at all. <laughs> yeah, my my parents were equally flabbergasted by that, even that's though crazy. that is a kind, that's the kind of thing I would I would have begged to do, and my uh, neurotic Jewish parents would <laughs> lost. Sarah the door. would have been the one you sacrificed because she wouldn't have made uh, it. Uh, a hundred percent. We've been on camping trips. I've almost sacrificed her in the woods a couple times. Um, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad you got, thank you for your support uh, of the show. I'm always glad to have fans on. And uh, it was, it was so much fun talking to you guys and getting a little insight into, uh, into Sarah. 
It's so good to see you too, Bridget. And I want to encourage yeah. everybody to support you on Patreon and pay the $5 a month. It's not that much. <laughs> yeah. You you heard them here for you heard it from Sarah's parents who who are showbiz parents and uh, they they know how to do the plugs. So we appreciate them so much. Um, is there any uh, I guess final question? Is there anything I didn't get to anything from like Sarah's childhood that uh, you were excited to bring up? Or, or do you she think she loves her sister so so much? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess we'll leave it with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, when are we yeah. going to California? Shout out to Hannah Bridget Griffith. That one again? I don't know. Soon, I hope. Okay. We haven't seen you in over a year. I know. I know. Hopefully. We've been going Hopefully, to Chicago uh, lately, but we'll switch away yeah. and go to LA. Not, not lately. Last Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. So hopefully this whole thing clears up and I can finally get the payoff of being Sarah's friend and getting into that pool of yours. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You're anytime. Always welcome. You're always welcome to come down to Texas. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you guys so much. All right. Love you. Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> Bye. Um, well, I hope you learned a lot today. I certainly did. Yeah. How yeah, I, I saw you uh, kind of float in and out of the room. I just want to make uh, sure there are levels and they were not like talking to nobody. Um, the only uh, correction I think I'll add to everything you ju- everything else is it is what it is. Um, I was not <laughs> responsible for the Ferguson uprising. I think what my mom was talking about was <laughs> my involvement at my university. It wasn't necessary, which was St. Louis University and but um, she gave me an awful lot of credit. <laughs> not, I, I am not like a civil rights leader. Like I do my part, right. but <laughs> right. when okay. she was saying that, I was like, I didn't like throw the first brick at Stonewall. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, but you would have if you could. Uh, oh, I would have loved to have thrown that glass into that mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but it sounds like the review from your parents of yourself, uh, five out of five stars. Uh, they certainly, I have one of those annoying parents that like love me and support oh, me. Oh, yeah. God. I don't know how yeah, embarrassing. Know. We, we both have such uh, sweet parents that like it was, it was, they, they, they definitely delighted in trying to embarrass us, but everything I think that we would say is embarrassing is uh, probably cute to them. No, I heard my mom try to correct my dad a little when he started talking about me pissing myself at the Nutcracker. It's like, mom, I talk about pissing myself every single it's, episode. It's a, it, it's a, I mean, it's a come on. Oh, come it's on. a Nutcracker, too. Wow. You well, guys were that committed to the Nutcracker. Uh, we love the arts. You do love the arts. We if if the anything. Arts. Yeah. If, 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 if we learned every, anything, Sarah Griffith, artist, performer, activist. Philanthropist. Sweetheart. Yeah. Sweetheart. <laughs> popular, I guess. <laughs> Very popular. Yeah. The the revelation of you being a cool girl, I think, is... Uh... That's not going to get me kicked off the show, is it? I mean, maybe. <laughs> Damn it. Um, I was hoping no one would find out. But yeah, you 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 kept that low key that, that uh, this uh, theater Star Wars nerd was... Uh, as, it, as it turns I... out, when you like mainstream pop culture and then you discuss mainstream pop culture with other people, it turns out a lot of people like it. Look, it's a life hack that <laughs> we all need Just to Just watch movies and talk about that. That's yeah, such an and, easy and, way. And then, yeah. How to make friends and influence people. Exactly. Yep. Well, it's... Yeah, that's uh, your lawyer background, too. Oh, yes. Which I 100% believe. Your dad said that. I had a question about... And he just kind of took that over of like what you would be like if you didn't go to a performing arts high school and the minute he said lawyer it's like oh yeah obviously she'd be a lawyer obviously obviously uh, sorry obviously. none of the, our stories took place at um yom kippur or uh, right. mitzvah yes. <laughs> it was uh <laughs> yeah it, it was i i almost wish you i mean you went wish you went to like a a, a catholic high school so huh. uh how dare you? <laughs> so, how dare you wish that upon me? Yeah, sorry that that seems that seems rough. But uh, hey, it's rough that's stuff. The of the sh- it's the premise of the show, or rough well, cut, as my dad named it. Yes, he did rename the podcast, which not that bad. It's fine. It's fine. I'll take it. Um, there you go. Well, your parents were lovely to talk to. Your my parents, parents were a delight. Sweetheart, yes, all around. We were raised by good people, and we're very fortunate for that. Spoiler alert! Yeah, spoiler. alert. We come alert. from good homes. Yeah, uh, which uh, we are very grateful and 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 recognize how lucky we are for that. And I I really hope you guys enjoyed 
hearing that insight from from our folks. And shout out to parents. Shout out to parents. Shout out Call to parents. Them. If you have if, if if you haven't called them in a while and you love them, give them a call. And if you don't love them, fuck them. Yep. And then, well, don't and fuck then, your parents. Sorry, don't fuck your parents. But you know what I mean, like. But like, you don't yeah, have to call them. You know, like, do not. Yeah, we we recognize our privilege, and uh, you know, but parents are cool sometimes. 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 <laughs> sometimes. Uh, yeah. So call your mom. Yep. If you can, if 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 you are so lucky to yep. have that kind of relationship with your mom, call her right call now. Her. Mm-hmm. Stop listening to us. Uh, but also like and subscribe, as Debbie said. Uh, Follow us on Twitter at Rough Cut Pod. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we will be changing our handles. Not really Rough Stuff Pod uh, at at all at all the social medias, and uh, you you know our Twitter handles at this time. You can find us on Twitter. You already know what it is. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Have a wonderful day.